Grace and peace, friends and family. Welcome to another conversation. This is Joy, founder of Pink Girl Teaches. I'm a certified life coach, author, as well as a podcaster. And today I am here to talk to you about the illusion of perfection. Before we jump into today's conversation, I just want to say a thank you to everybody that has donated and sponsored um, my channel in this community. I want you to know what I'm actually doing with your sponsorships is using it as, or your donations, should I say, I'm using them as sponsorships towards the Brave Workshop, which is managing your emotions after narcissistic abuse. This is going to help women that are transitioning through the fog and trying to make sense of what they're feeling and how to and what to do with these feelings. So I want to thank you so much. And I ask, and it's my sincere prayer that God will pour back into your life and that he would meet you right where you are in the areas where you need his presence. So I do thank you from the bottom of my heart. And this is what it's going towards. And I want you to know that. But I'm also just so grateful for you believing in me and showing me the support the way that you do. God bless you all. The Breathe Workshop, if you are interested, is on the 20th, 26th of February of this month <laughs> between 1 and 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And you can go to my website under the Upcoming tab to register and be part of the workshop. If you need a sponsorship, very few still remain, but you will be able to get one if you do it quickly, right? So let's have this conversation. The Illusion of Perfection. Now, I got this... The, um, I decided to do this video after reading a comment left in one of my videos on TikTok. And it was basically saying how everybody was shocked after this woman and the narcissist that she was married to announced that they were getting divorced. One thing you always have to remember that when it involves a narcissist or if it involves a narcissist, power and control is always going to be in play. They always have to manipulate somebody. And sometimes it's multiple people that they're manipulating all at once. You see, they want to give an illusion of, per of perfection. And they want to give this, um, this, this vision or this you know, perspective of a lifestyle that they are living, which isn't really the truth. And that is manipulating the narrative. It's a lie. It's not true. It's controlling. And that in itself is witchcraft, right? Manipulation, intimidation, and control. So all those factors are in play when they try to control the dynamic or the perception of a situation. You see, you've got to understand that perfection is absolutely essential to them because they don't want to be viewed as weak. And if things don't fall into a particular box, a particular pattern, or a particular lifestyle, then things can't be that great. And that's why no matter what is going on, they have to have that perfect lifestyle. That's why when you see them skipping off into the sunset and you think, man, why couldn't that be me? Why did I have that lifestyle with them? Why are they so much happier with the new supply? Why does their life seem so much better than mine? They're manipulating you in those moments. They're controlling the perception. It is an illusion. Nothing is real. What is real is you in your situation, feeling your emotions and dealing with the mess that they left. That's real. That's the real work that needs to be done. Not this vision of them skipping off into tomorrow. They're skipping off towards the Bates Motel and it's only going to be a matter of time before things flip upside down. But even then, you will not see that image of perfection be disrupted. It will still stand. They will always let you know what they want to want you to believe. I want to use this as an example, and I'm not saying that people who do this are narcissists, because let's just face the facts. Not everybody is a narcissist. There may be many narcissists out there, but there are also many good people. But people, you know, for whatever reason, maybe low self-esteem, insecurities, wanting to prove something to somebody, whatever their, whatever their story is, will take these perfect, perfect pictures. And I mean professional makeup, professional hair, professional clothes, and just have a, a background that is curated to give off an image and post it on Instagram or wherever as if this is their everyday lifestyle. 
baby's hair needs to be perfect, uh, perfect, clothes and everything. It's about the image. And that's how narcissists live. They just kind of take things up several notches because it's not just the image in the moment, but it's in every moment. But what happens behind closed doors? What happens when there's no need to take pictures for social media? What happens when they're not trying to control anybody because they're finally home and they can be the monsters that they are? What happens now when the facade is over with a new supply and they know the truth and they know what you know and sometimes what you even tried to warn you, but they were too prideful to listen. Listen, some of us were in that situation, couldn't believe anything that anybody told us about this person because guess what? We want what we want. It is no different. And essentially, when narcissists are creating these perfect pictures and these perfect illusions, right? <laughs> essentially, they're gaslighting you, making you believe that there's something wrong with you, making you believe that maybe if you behaved better, things would be better. And then to make it even worse, and this is why gaslighting is so effective and very demonic, is you end up gaslighting yourself. I was the problem. Maybe if I wasn't so argumentative and maybe if I wasn't tired all the time because I just had a baby and I've got to keep the house clean, but I just wanted to nap, you start gaslighting yourself. This is so effective. It is so effective, but it's not real. It's a form of manipulation and control as well as intimidation. It is all still witchcraft. And it doesn't matter. And, you know, I understand that there's different levels in the demonic world. We've had several discussions about this. It doesn't matter which spirit is in operation at the time when all you need to know is it's witchcraft. And there is only one way to deal with it, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus. And so it's up to you now to decide what is it that I'm going to do with what I know. You know, Psalms 37, and I have verses 1 through 4 up here. It says, do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither like green plants, they will soon die away. God's word is telling us not to be envious of these situations that he pulled us out of. God's word is telling us that, listen, we need to take our eyes off of this situation because essentially each dog has its day. Now, that's not what the word says. That's what I said. He's telling us not to focus on that because the things that become our focus they drive our heart. And when something really is the center of your focus, it pulls away from God. And that's a very dangerous place to be because that's how we ended up in some of those situations in the first place. And I have Psalms 81 or Psalm 81, should I say, starting at verse 11 through 12. And what it says is, but my people would not hearken to my voice. Don't you know that I heard God's voice tell me to leave this man alone at hello, day one, hello. I didn't have any evidence that there was something wrong with him. I didn't know anything, but prideful me, full of arrogance and I can do what I want. And I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna see what this is about. It says, but my people would not hearken to my voice and Israel would, not, would, would none of me. So I gave them up to their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsel. Just, and I'm going back to me as the example here, right? Because, hey, this is what it is. I thought I knew it all. And so, yeah, he turned me over to my own heart's lust, and I walked in my own counsel. And that was no wise counsel. It was a whole fool. Timothy calls people like that, and how I was a silly woman. Thought I could do things all by myself as if I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm none of those things. And I learned some very harsh lessons, difficult lessons. I mean, mind-blowing lessons. But this is what we have to accept, is that in some of these situations, when we fix our heart on what is going on outside of our control, what is going on with these people, what is going on with the new supply, why does it look like they're succeeding? We've taken our heart off of the main thing, 
and that is God. And we are trying to find answers and explanations on what really is now essentially none of our business because we have to hand all of these things over to him. And so we don't want to be left with our heart's lust, which is which can become the pain, the hurt, the misery, the sorrow, the regret. And he leave us to walk in our own counsel. Think about how it is for narcissists. They desired what they wanted, prideful, arrogant. And, you know, they chose to be who they are. And what essentially go back to Psalm 81 verses 11 through 12. God let them walk in their own counsel so much so that they ended up at the point where their, their conscience is seared and they have a reprobate mind. How many times do you see instances where people get so focused on what was? Some people can't come out of those high school years because those were the good old days, but your ladder is greater than your past. So we can't get so caught up in this illusion of perfection when we know that these are disordered individuals whose conscience is seared, who have reprobate minds. Nothing is going to change at any given time. Nothing. But you, on the other hand, have the opportunity to trust in the Lord and to do good and dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I want to highlight trust in the Lord. That means to take confidence in God, to have faith in him, because he's the one who holds all of your tomorrows. He's the one who can heal your heart. He's the one who has the answers to what you need. And so if we can put all our energy in seeking him and in trusting him, then we then, you know, we are more than overcomers through him who loved us. I want to say this. And, you know, this is something that I didn't think of on my own when I was in my own journey of recovery. But I knew and this could be nothing but the spirit of God telling me that I couldn't stay in survivor communities forever. I couldn't continue to hear the same sound, the narcissist, this and get back at the narcissist and the narcissist and the new supply. It becomes a lot after a minute and you cannot ingest this information over and over and over again without feeding yourself what you need to transition beyond narcissistic abuse. Maybe Maybe, and this is a suggestion, you need videos that speak to self-love. You need videos that speak to God's love. You need videos that speak to God's purpose for your life. You need videos that speak to your heart. And this is where now your relationship with God must be so solid and strong that you hear his voice and you have the discipline and the mindset to say, Father, what is it that you want me to focus on? Where is it that you want my attention to be? Because the very things that we feed the most become magnified. And there's a, there's a danger in staying in the survivor community for too long because you are not created to be a victim. You are not created to be a survivor, but you are more, you are, you are an overcome through, an overcomer. Oh, tongue tied. You're an overcomer through Christ Jesus. You can do all things through Christ. That means that you shouldn't even just be surviving, but you must walk or not surviving, but thriving. You must walk in your most significant state. That means walk in your prepared places in the name of Jesus. That means you walk in dominion because you were given dominion in Genesis 1 and 26. And in a survivor community, you are not walking in dominion unless you are there to minister to other survivors and to uplift other survivors and to walk in your God-given power. Am I saying that you need to bypass your season? Absolutely not. Because you never get to where you're going if you don't acknowledge where you are. But you must go through. And I want and I'm saying this because I'm I feel a need to, you know, to say it that be mindful about how long you stay. And wouldn't that be like, oh, but you know, you're a content creator. Yes, I am. But I care about your well being. I don't care about what what you know what's about you here and views and numbers, because there is always going to be somebody new waking up to narcissistic abuse, and if it's God's desire, he will lead them right here. Just don't you get caught up staying where you don't belong. Remember Lot's wife? She looked back and she turned and became a pillar of salt. 
if you go to other communities and you watch other videos and you want to know if this is a safe community for you to grow, read the comments. Are they focused forward? What is, are, is it bitterness that holds them back? What is the posture in those comments? What is the hard posture? And I'm not bashing anybody. I just want you to be mindful so that you don't stay in Lodabar too long. Nothing grows in Lodabar. It's a place where you can come and get information. I'm talking about these communities in general. Get information so that you can process what you've been through and understand what you've been through. But then take the next step to overcome. Feed your, your, your future self. More than you feed this current self. What am I saying and what do I mean? Feed who you are becoming more than you feed this need. And I'm not saying neglect this need because you still need to take care of it. You still you still need to heal. You still still need to walk through the valley of the shadow of fear, of death. I'm getting tongue tied here. But I want you to understand that you are not defined by narcissistic abuse. You are not a victim. You are a victor in the name of Jesus. You, you are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You are none of the things that the narcissist makes you feel that you are or made you feel that you were. And you are not missing out on anything when they curate these perfect images and post them in the new supply. Listen, again, they're on their way to the Bates Motel. You want nothing to do with that. So I just wanted to take a moment to encourage you today. And I hope that it's helpful and I hope it helps you think about, you know, what's next for me. Because before you were formed in your mother's womb, let me say this to you. God's plan, God had a plan and he had a purpose for your life. He ordained you before your parents ever met. Heaven spoke a superior word over your life before your parents met. God needed you in the earth realm to do great things in the name of Jesus in this time and in this season. And you may wonder, well, I'm still kind of going through it, but you know, your smile lights up rooms. Your smile makes other people feel good. Your kind words, those are all acts of faith and acts of kindness. And they're all, you know, acts of service to him. So walk in who he said that you are, who he says that you are. And don't ever for a moment think that because somebody appears to have it all, that it is all that it is not. But listen, God is all that. His grace is sufficient to get you through this. God is all that. He is the author and the finisher of your faith, the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah, he's El Shaddai. And that's who we can look to. That's who we put our trust in. And that's whose name we glorify above all else. So I want to thank you so much for spending some of your afternoon or your evening, whatever time it is where you are, Thank you for spending this time with me. It's my sincere hope that you come from behind and fearlessly pursue your most significant state. God bless you.